Good Robot Brewery is known for its mix of good brews, community spirit, and social activism. What began as a single brewery on Roby Street has turned into a collective of beer gardens, the original brewery, and now a modern state-of-the-art production and co-packaging facility. I toured this facility with co-owner Joshua Council to discuss Good Robot's now decade-long journey and evolution. Angus and Doug are my co-founders. We met at Queen's University in college. We were all living on the engineering floor, and uh, we used to go to Angus's room and drink warm Alexander Keith's before midterms to steady our nerves. That was sort of the first instance of beer bringing us together. Uh, and uh, years later, after we entered engineering and decided that wasn't so fun, we decided to quit our careers and open a space that brought people together with slightly colder uh, beer in Halifax. As for the transition from single brewery to what they are now, Council says. Originally in our business plan, we had it that the founders, me, Angus and Doug, uh, were working the bar at night after a day of brewing and financing and marketing and all that good stuff. You know, we were quite delusional in that way, I think like a lot of entrepreneurs are. Uh, and then you open the floodgates and you're just struggling to keep up <clears throat> with demand. Uh, so when COVID hit, there was suddenly an opportunity to kind of right size the company. What really happened was hospitality, which was what we always leaned into and, and everything was thrown at the bar and it was a lot of fun. But when suddenly that business model didn't make sense anymore, we had to decide we either have to shrink or grow. And shrinking meant turning it into a lifestyle business, which that's not really what it was about. We kind of wanted to see, you know, we, we, we bought a canning line, it tripled retail revenue, and suddenly we thought, this is kind of a gorilla in a cage, this brand, that we've been relegating to just a brew pub. What happens if we let the gorilla out of the cage? Opening that cage led the team to develop a production facility capable of producing and packaging more than their own products. Now, they support about two dozen companies. What we really want it to be is a place that services the mom and pop beverage operations of Atlantic Canada who don't need to take the same gamble and risk that we did, which is very hard, very stressful, very alienating, and be able to co-pack or co-manufacture their beverages uh, at our facility, and then hopefully serve those to the community through our hospitality venues and as we continue to grow the good robot beer and cocktail and seltzer side of the company uh, nationally across Canada. I would love for people to focus on selling and marketing their product. I think consumer packaged goods and beverage brands do best when the founder is front and center talking about why they love this low carb strawberry sparkling water so much and how it helped them be a better cyclist rather than behind a packaging line putting the product into a can. I asked Council how hard is it to grow and maintain the core values Good Robot was built on. The old adage of a man never steps, steps in the same river twice because it's not the same river and it's not the same man. You can't undo what happened. You can't undo COVID. You can't undo aging. You can't undo externalities beyond your control. And those externalities do change you. And our original slogan at the brew pub was, I don't want to grow up. Well, at some point, you do want to feed your family and you do want to pay yourself a salary and you do want your employees to have a living wage and you do want things to work and you're tired of throwing all the energy at it and it just not being a viable business. So yeah, you have to make some decisions uh, and sometimes you don't live to your core values or your core values are perceived as something that you didn't intend on because it's really hard to communicate that vision and it's really hard to uh, scale revenue, grow employees, and still remain close with everyone. There's a, a level of middle management that goes in to protect both the employee and the foundership. Uh, so you become distant from folks, right? You have to make hard decisions about who's on board and who's not. And fundamentally, at, at some point, you're, you decide your business has to serve other purposes in your life too, as well as those employees, and see it as a paycheck uh, and a, a business still doing positive, but maybe it does it a little differently than it once did. Doing business differently has included a change of role and outlook for counsel himself. Sometimes you have to make your own fun. Right now I'm working on a side of the company that isn't my strength and isn't what I love to do. Uh, it's just something that is something the company needs. I would much rather go back and you know uh, play in the pig pen with my fellow piglets uh, I love the creative side of the company. I love culture. Uh, you know, I love the community engagement and events and experiences. 
but we've got teams for all that. And so you kind of have to learn to let go of it and let the kid go off to college and warn them, don't make the same mistake I did. But you realize all that advice, it's, it's useless. They have to make the same mistake, but do it in their way so that they learn in their way. And you just have to let them, you know, you have to be okay letting that go. Uh, ideally, at some point, yeah, I would love the freedom within the company to step into somewhere that I am more passionate about. You can't be passionate about all things for all people at all times. And uh, right now, I'm doing something I like, but I don't love. So, yeah, you have to learn to, to give up certain things in service of, of the bigger picture. With such rapid growth and expansion, I ask counsel if there is an end game. Something that is so far beyond your original vision because there wasn't really ever included in the original vision the idea of exiting. <laughs> I can't tell you in earnest what the plan is. As f from a personal level, I know that we need to slow down and smell the roses a little bit in our personal lives. Speaking of smelling the roses, I concluded by asking Council what he enjoys drinking on those treasured few days off. I'm a marketer's dream. I'm impulsive as hell. I <laughs> truly, uh, I drink one thing at one venue because that venue specializes in Mexican food. And I'll have our Mexican lager there, Diablo. Uh, I'm a huge hoppy guy. Um, God, you know, I can't avoid them. Anywhere I go, I get excited for them. Uh, I love the novelty beverages. Yeah, so anything, anytime we do anything with fruit or coffee or chocolate or something that sounds like it shouldn't be in existence, that's my jam right there. So if you like the content, don't forget to like and subscribe. Go out and enjoy a good robot beer at one of their beer gardens.